that was very interesting and clearly provoked some, um, some thought amongst our, our viewers. Um, one, a pair of questions came in from Carolyn. Are there some common principles between Alexander Technique and Rolfing, postural integration, and do you work with children and young people? So that, of course, ties into what we were just talking about, yeah. taking us Alexander Technique into primary schools or elsewhere. Yeah, yeah. So let's start with uh, the, young, the young people. Uh, often parents will say, oh, my, my child has got terrible posture, he sits in front of a television and he's got uh, rounded shoulders, can you help him or her? Most of the time, I am a little bit dubious yeah. because if a kid is sitting goggle-eyed in front of a television and not particularly interested or engaged, yes. that will be the psychophysical response. I would suggest to the parents of that particular child to get the child more involved and engaged because it's a bit like walking down the street. If you walk down the street and you're particularly depressed and you're all slumped, and you're a bit apathetic, and suddenly you see someone walking towards you you haven't seen for a long time, who you're very fond of. You don't go, oh, hello. You go, hey. Yes. And there's a natural uplift. And it's that that we're trying to promote in Alexander. So when you're looking at your kids and think they've got the problem, there's number one, number one, it's not necessarily true. It may be a momentary thing while they're bored in front of a very passive television screen. And also, the postural patterns of kids is often about the family dynamic. Often kids will copy the, the postural and emotional patterns of the parents. So I yeah. usually say to parents, come yourself. Let's work with you, because you'll be a role model for your children. Yes. And it was clear from what you demonstrated a few minutes ago with Justine that people could feel a, a real impact from your training, your teaching in just that short period of time and therefore would be encouraged to come back to more to feel yes. even greater benefit. Hopefully, do you see that translating to children from their parents? Can they, could they pass on those techniques to their children? They're not passing on techniques, they're passing on through mirroring yes. a quality of being. This mm. is what parents are passing on. They're not giving them techniques. I, I've got two kids, age six and four. I don't pass them on anything in terms of formal techniques. I hope I'm passing them on as well as a number of terrible things. I hope I'm passing on one or two good things too yeah. by, through mirroring. Okay. Um, the Rolfing question. The Rolfing question, of course, yes. Yeah. So the Rolfing question. I've had, um, when I was in uh, Los Angeles about 30 years ago, I had uh, some Rolfing sessions with someone who was trained by Ida Rolf, the originator of the Rolfing technique, and I found it very interesting. Um, I think my, my understanding of Rolfing, certainly for myself, was that the, the muscle systems and all the, uh, going through the whole body in terms of its different sequencings over 12 sessions or 13 sessions, um, didn't actually offer me long-term benefits. It was, it was a very detailed massage and certainly covered every single muscle group in my system. Mm -hmm. But I didn't feel that the emotional components of why my muscles were doing certain things was resolved in a matter of 12 sessions. The answer is no. Um, much, much later on, I went into psychoanalysis and uh, spent a lot of time exploring myself. And um, that was very, very beneficial, but that's another long story. Uh, okay. But I, I, uh, I don't find Rolfing a problem. But I, I, I do think that Rolfers have to be very, very careful not to push a person into destructuring a defense pattern that is actually necessary. And that, that's, yes. we're going into quite deep psychological territory now. But I think we have to have immense respect for the integrity of the, of the human organism and its need to hold itself in particular ways and not to break yes. it open prematurely. So I would caution against any system mm. that rushes into a fix of something which is quite embedded in the system and may actually be a result of trauma and not think it can be resolved in 13 sessions. Right. It does strike me from what you've discussed and what you've demonstrated, but also from what I read in the BMJ paper on uh, Alexander Technique, that there are probably very few adverse possible outcomes. If any, I don't think there are any possible adverse outcomes from Alexander Technique unless you miss some red flag. I think that's exactly what I say to my students. I think our insurance policy per year is something like 80 or 90 pounds a year. Yes. Uh, I don't know of any instances in 30, 35 years of working yeah. where there have been any problematic outcomes yeah. 
or counterindications of the Alexander yeah. technique. And of the 600 cases in that BMJ paper, I think only, there was only one recorded adverse outcome, um, and that was from one of the massage patients. And that's not a, yeah. Yeah. a slight yeah. on massage yeah. patients, but it's far more likely with a physical therapy where you're actively well, intervening. Well, I'm not muscles. sticking needles in anybody, and I'm certainly not mm -hmm. clicking anybody. Yeah. Uh, so I think, as you can sort of see from Justin, if the maximum amount I was doing was to touch with this almost non-invasive, yeah. non-doing touch, there's very little I can do to harm anybody. Yes. How does the, this is from the audience, how does Alexander Technique reconcile the mindset of doing without trying with exploring one's current limits with a view to measuring progress? And this could be in the context of sports performance, for example. So I presume if you're pushing your limits, how do you do without trying? Yeah, the paradox about all sports um, success, and uh, top sports people will tell you this, that when you're in the zone, there's less effort and more success. Yeah. That when you're running a marathon, that the more relaxed you are, the more distance you'll cover. When you're running... The more efficient you're going to be. Of course. Yeah. When you're running a sprint, again, the more relaxed you are and the less striving you are, the more uh, success you're going to uh, generate. And it's the same with match point at tennis. If you activate the flight fight pattern at match point in tennis, you will snatch at the ball and it will not be a good shot. If you maintain that quality of relaxation and poise and ease at the moment of match point, which isn't computed, it's just hopefully embedded in your system, yeah. you are going to have a greater chance of success. Yeah. So sports success is measured by points, but those points will be generated through the mastery of the, of the nervous system, yeah. which is why you have all these books, Zen and the Art of Archery and Zen and the Art of Golf or the Inner Game of Golf and the Inner Game of Tennis. And they all say the same thing. They all have the same wisdom, which is true relaxation and, and alertness should be the basis for all successful sports performance. Yeah. I'll quickly read this observation. I have a couple of things I want to, questions I want to raise before we, we conclude. Um, but I like this. Someone has sent in this comment. Boy, oh boy, do us osteopaths need some help like that? Very similar work challenges for us. Combine it with Chato's respiratory work and so much physical and emotional stress would be removed. And I suspect there's an awful lot of sympathy for that, uh, that view because Leon Chato's approach to you know, dealing with the respiratory system through in some cases, a more muscular intervention was really revealing to us uh, on a recent broadcast. Yes. And what you've been saying has been equally revealing. So, um, yeah, I think people have got a lot from this. One of the key things which I did want to ask before we finish is, well, what can you help with? What do you do for arthritic knees? What do you do for, what would you do with a lady who's just had a hip replacement to help her, for example, yeah. or a frozen shoulder? Well, often people do come after operations after accidents, after breaks, and so many of them exhibit similar sorts of patterns of compensation. And behind almost all of them are fear reactions of avoidance. Yes. I don't want that to hurt. So they'll bias themselves onto one side or the other. And that's a psychological pattern. It isn't necessarily due to some real pain, it's due to an anticipated pain. So the Alexander Technique teacher has a very important role in helping people psychologically readjust to not be so vigilant, not to be anticipating the next emergency with a hyper yes. flight fight modality, but actually to treat themselves with a care and kindness and ease, which can then aid healing. Because when a person is anticipating the next emergency and the next major pain, they're in a state of, of, yeah. of excitation. Healing doesn't take place. Perhaps one final question from the audience here. Um, you started off talking about the history of Alexander Technique and how it was to do with voice projection and so yes, on. Yeah. A question of a similar note. Can it help with stammering? That was the original, uh, one of the original applications of Alexander. Alexander worked a lot with stammering. Did it work? What was that film, George the... The, the, the stammerer? The, the oh, yes, yeah, the, um, the King's Speech. That was also about yes. an Alexander teacher. Of course it was, yes. Yeah. I didn't, reali I, yeah, I didn't yes, realize he was very an Alexander. Much an application but, uh, because what's stammering, often, if, there's, and if there isn't a physical impediment, yes. it's an emotional desire to face forwards and reach out into getting the word out with an over anxiety to produce yeah. the result. Coming back, coming back to stillness, coming yeah. back to a, a quietening of the nervous system can often activate a much more normalized speech pattern. 